Hey everyone, it's Lisa Childs here from TriedTestedAndTrue.com where I share with you Instant Pot inspirations and ways to feel confident using your Instant Pot. Today I'm sharing with you 10 easy and amazing recipes using your Instant Pot. First, I'm going to press the saute button on my Instant Pot and then add two tablespoons of butter. We want to just make sure that's nice and melted and hot before we add in our chicken. And in the meantime, we're going to season our chicken tenderloins. Here I'm using half a pound of chicken tenderloins. You can use up to a pound. And I'm going to season it with a little bit of garlic salt, pepper, and parsley. Flip them over and season them on the other side so then there's flavor all around. And then we're going to saute them in the Instant Pot to get them nice and browned on both sides. This step is optional, but it does add a ton of really good flavor to the finished dish and so I do recommend it. If you don't have time for it though, just throw everything in the Instant Pot and you're totally fine. When you're sauteing the chicken, make sure you don't touch it. So don't mess with it and keep moving it and keep flipping it. You only want to flip it one time. You wanna get that nice brown crispy sear on each side. After the chicken is done browning on both sides, remove them to a plate. You don't need to cook them all the way. You're just getting them browned. And then after you remove the chicken, add one and a quarter cup of chicken broth to the pot to deglaze the bottom of the pot. You want to also add one cup of long grain white rice. You can also use jasmine or basmati rice and scrape off the bottom of that pot. You don't want any of those brown bits stuck on there. Otherwise your instant pot might burn. This is seriously so easy. So now you just put the chicken tenderloins back on top of the rice and that's it. Make sure you add in any of those juices that may have come out of the chicken while it was resting. Pour them in there because that's all flavor and you really want that. And then add the lid back onto your Instant Pot. Turn the knob from venting to sealing. And then we're going to cook this for five minutes with a 10 minute natural pressure release. At this point, you want to kind of decide what you're going to do. If you have an air fryer lid, then that's great. If not, you'll want to preheat your oven to 375 degrees and get a casserole dish out because you'll want to transfer your creamy Ritz chicken into the casserole dish to get nice and crispy with this yummy buttery Ritz topping that we're making now. So I'm just going to take one sleeve of Ritz crackers. If you don't have Ritz, you can also use saltines. You could use some cornflake cereal. You could use panko. Uh, breadcrumbs, anything like that. But this is Ritz chicken, so we really want that yummy, fattening, buttery cookie or cracker. And we're gonna just crunch up all those Ritz crackers in the sleeve itself and dump them into three tablespoons of melted butter. Toss that up to make sure all of those cracker bits get nice and submerged in that yummy butter. And then we're going to pour this all over our Ritz chicken before we bake it. So after the 10 minute natural pressure release, just remove that lid. And then I like to remove the chicken tenderloins away from the rice. So then it kind of stays a little bit prettier, but you don't have to if you don't want to, because now we're going to add in the rest of the chicken and rice casserole ingredients. So like I said, I'm removing the chicken tenderloins here, and then we are going to add one can of cream of chicken soup. You kind of want to work fast right now because you want to keep everything hot in the pot. So make sure that your Instant Pot is on keep warm mode so then it can heat through the soup and the next ingredient, which is one cup of sour cream into the rice and just mix that all up to make sure it gets warmed up. At this point, you can also add some shredded cheddar cheese. That would be really delicious, but I like mine just, just plain like this. So add in the soup, add in the sour cream and mix it all up and keep it warm. Once you're done with that, add the chicken tenderloins back on top of that creamy rice casserole and then add our crushed Ritz crackers on top. This makes a really yummy buttery topping and it's so good. It's like the iconic kind of American casserole. So I'm setting my air fryer lid that I have here to 350 degrees and we're gonna set it at 10 minutes and just kind of check and see. I'm pretty sure this was done in about three to five minutes. It wasn't, it didn't take very long at all. So you can see it's really nice and brown and crisp. It looks perfect. This is the completed dish. It's so indulgent and creamy and crunchy and it really just reminds me of like childhood because that's what I was when I was a freshman in college. It's so fun and I know that everyone in your family will enjoy this, especially the kids. You can also add some additional cheese to this recipe. It would be really delicious.
So the first thing we're going to do is cut our salmon filet. I like to buy a large salmon filet from the grocery store or from Costco, and then just slice it into the portions that I want to serve it in. This recipe will work for any piece of fish or salmon that's about one to two inches on the thickest side. Next, just pick your seasoning. Today we're using my very favorite Redmond Real Salt Blend. It is their lemon pepper blend. This is so, so good. I love all those flavor notes. There's lemon, there's pepper, salt, garlic, and it's very, very good. So you can use something like a lemon pepper, which is a very classic flavor pairing for salmon, or something that I'd like to use as well is like a Cajun seasoning. So I have Cajun seasoning here. You can use whatever seasoning you want. If you don't have a seasoning blend, you can always just do kosher salt, pepper. That is super delicious. So after you cut your salmon filet from a larger piece, what you can also do is get individually cut pieces from your butcher or in the meat and seafood aisle at your grocery store. If they sell them pre-cut, those are even easier. If you wanna use a frozen salmon filet, usually those are only about a centimeter thick, and so you will overcook them if you use this time. If you wanna use frozen salmon, just adjust the time for about one to two minutes. But this recipe in particular is for a fresh salmon filet. To make our Instant Pot salmon, we are going to add one cup of water into our Instant Pot. You can use broth, but I have found that the flavor really doesn't change very much if you use broth or water, so today we're just using water, it's the simplest and easiest. After you add the water, you wanna add your trivet or your rack or your basket with your salmon filet on it and place it into the Instant Pot. You can pre-season it if you like, but I like to just season it right into the Instant Pot so then it falls into the water. And then I like to place a couple lemon slices on top of the salmon. This just allows the lemon to kind of cook and those juices kind of melt into the salmon and it just adds a really great flavor. Next, all you have to do is just close the lid, turn the knob from venting to sealing, and then we're gonna cook the salmon filet for three to five minutes. Now, remember this thickness was about an inch and a half to two inches thick. If your salmon is any thicker than that, you'll wanna add an extra minute, but I cooked this salmon piece for four minutes. If you'd like your salmon to be a little bit more rare or medium, you can do less time, but for a well done cooked piece of salmon, for about an inch and a half to two inches thick, I did four minutes of cook time. After the four minutes was up, just do a quick release because we don't wanna overcook our salmon, then it will be super dry and gross. So do a quick release and then we are going to check our salmon temperature. You want it to be about 140 degrees to make sure it's all the way cooked. And if it's not all the way cooked, then just place the lid back on the Instant Pot and let it steam through for about two to three extra minutes. And then you can check the temperature again. Now all you have to do is just place it on a plate and enjoy. Today we're doing our Instant Pot salmon on a bed of wild rice that I also made in the Instant Pot. And if you wanna learn how to make that Instant Pot wild rice, I'll link that video right here. But it's super simple. It's a very healthy, delicious way to enjoy delicious salmon. It's my favorite thing to eat. And that's it. First, we're gonna start out with a quarter cup of graham cracker crumbs. Now, if you don't like graham cracker crumbs or you don't want to use those, you can use a shortbread cookie, you can use any kind of like a Biscoff cookie, cereal, any just type of cookie crumb will work for this recipe. So we've got a quarter cup of graham cracker crumbs and to that I'm adding just a tablespoon of melted butter. And then we're gonna add half a tablespoon of white sugar and just a dash of cinnamon. I love the flavor of cinnamon in a graham cracker crust. It's so good. So that's it. All you have to do is just mix this up in a little bowl. And then we're gonna add this into a ramekin. So make sure that your ramekin is oven proof or oven safe. And then that will let you know that it's okay to use in your Instant Pot as well. So it's gonna be a little crumbly at first, but you just have to moisten all the crumbs with that yummy butter. And then we're just going to press it into our ramekin. You don't have to grease this or anything like that. We're just gonna pour our graham cracker crumbs into the ramekin and it smells so good. There's just something about butter and graham crackers that just, they're just meant to be. So I'm just using a little spatula here to press it down, but you could also use the bottom of a cup or bottom of a measuring cup and you can press these down. If you'd like to make two of these at the same time, they will fit in your Instant Pot. Just make sure your ramekins will fit and you can just double the recipe. All right, we don't have to do anything with this crust. Just set it aside and we'll make our filling. 
Next, let's make our filling for our key lime pie. So I just washed out the same bowl that I used to make our graham cracker crust, makes it super easy, one bowl. You don't want more dishes, right? So we are going to start out with three and a half ounces of sweetened condensed milk. The easiest way to measure out three and a half ounces is using a kitchen scale, but if you don't have a kitchen scale, it's just right about a third of a cup. So we're just gonna pour in our sweetened condensed milk. So, so good. And here's a little tip. If you don't want to buy an entire can of sweet condensed milk because now you don't know what to do with the rest of it, try and find the ingredients at the dollar store. I know it sounds kind of weird, but the dollar store carries smaller sized portions of regular sized items in their store because they're only a dollar. And so if you just need a little bit of an ingredient, try and check the dollar store first and you might be able to find it there. All right, to our sweet and condensed milk, we're just gonna add one egg yolk. And next we are going to add two tablespoons of fresh lime juice, which is about the same as one lime. You'll usually be able to get two tablespoons out of one small lime. I'm just going to roll the lime on my cutting board like this and that kind of releases the juices from inside of the lime to make it easier to juice. So really quick, before we juice it, I'm just going to take the zest of the lime and just add about half a teaspoon of lime zest to our key lime pie filling. And it just smells so good. It adds great flavor. It just makes me happy. So we've got about half a teaspoon of lime zest here, and now we can cut the lime and then we will juice two tablespoons of lime juice into our filling. I'm just gonna juice the lime right into the filling like this because I know each lime is gonna give me about two tablespoons. So my new cookbook has 175 fast and easy recipes that you can make in your three or six quart instant pot. It's just nice to be able to have a book of just single portion recipes so then you don't have any waste or leftovers. So next we're just going to mix this all together. And it might look kind of clumpy at first, but you just have to keep on mixing and it will all come together. If you're not a huge lime fan, you can also substitute the lime juice with some lemon juice and lemon zest. That is also a delicious variation of this easy recipe. Next, we're just gonna place our filling right over our crust, and then it's going to be ready to cook. After you put the filling on top of the crust, all we need to do is just cover it with a little foil, and you don't have to grease that or anything as well. And then we're going to place our mini key lime pie into the Instant Pot with one cup of water. I like to place my pie on a little trivet like this. If you don't have a trivet, you can also use a silicone sling like this, or you can even use a steamer basket. So to our Instant Pot, I'm just going to add one cup of water and then place our little mini key lime pie right in. This only cooks for 10 minutes on high pressure with a 10 minute natural pressure release. And then you'll have to cool and it's the hardest part, but then you have to refrigerate and then you can enjoy. After your key lime pie has cooked for 10 minutes on high pressure with a 10 minute natural pressure release, just carefully remove your pie from the Instant Pot and just let it cool to room temperature for a couple hours. After that, you have to refrigerate for four to six hours, but ideally overnight is best, and then you're ready to eat. I love to serve mine with a little fresh whipped cream and some lime zest. It's so pretty and delicious. So I'm gonna make just a little bit of whipped cream for our single portion key lime pie recipe. And here's a tip, if you use just a little bit of heavy cream in a jar or a cup, and then you use your hand mixer, you can make just a small portion of heavy cream without having to use a full size kitchen mixer or to have a a ton of whipped cream left over. So in this cup, I just have about a quarter cup of heavy cream and a little bit of powdered sugar. We're just gonna start blending it together. All right, and look, we've got whipped cream, just a little bit, it's so nice. So then you don't have to buy a whole can or a whole tub of whipped cream. You can have fresh, delicious whipped cream, but just the amount you need. Our key lime pie is finally finished after it's refrigerated overnight. I'm serving it with some whipped cream, some lime zest, and some additional graham cracker crumbs. If you want it to look extra fancy, you can do some lime wedges as well. Let's give it a little taste. Oh, that is a perfect bite. Oh, I gotta get some whipped cream in there. All right.
Mm. Oh, that was so good. Mm. Okay. The custard is the perfect texture. Super creamy, custardy, not lumpy at all, super smooth. It's not too sweet. And then we've got that cinnamony graham cracker crust at the bottom with a little fresh whipped cream. Oh my gosh. This is the perfect single portion dessert. So the first thing we do is just season our chicken tenderloins. I'm using four chicken tenderloins, but I would account for about two to three per person, depending on how big of a serving size you want to do. I'm going to season these with a little bit of garlic salt, or you can also do salt and garlic powder, some pepper and some ginger. Flip them over and do the exact same thing on the other side. And today we are using chicken tenderloins for all of these recipes. They're incredibly tender. They're really easy to cook because they cook really quickly. And so I like using that. But if you wanna use chicken breasts or chicken thighs, any of those will work. So first put your Instant Pot on high saute and then add about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. When the Instant Pot is hot and the oil is nice and glistening and shiny, then we can add in our seasoned chicken tenderloins. If you want to use a different kind of chicken, like a chicken breast or chicken thigh, just make sure that you cook it a little bit longer. But for the best, most consistent result, I would use the chicken tenderloins like we've used in the recipe today. I like to sear the chicken tenderloins. You're not cooking them through all the way, but I like to sear them on each side so then they can get a little bit of extra flavor. This step is completely optional if you don't have the time, but I highly recommend it because you want to add another layer of flavor to your chicken teriyaki rice bowls, and this will do that for you. After the chicken has seared on that other side, take out the chicken and just put them on a reserved plate. You'll notice all these yummy browned bits at the bottom of the pot, that's called fond, and you want that because it's all that amazing flavor. However, you want to deglaze your pot with a cup and a half of water or chicken broth so it doesn't stick and burn onto your Instant Pot. So add in that liquid and then use a spatula or a wooden spoon and scrape all those brown bits off the bottom of the pot, otherwise you might get the burn notice. Next, add one cup of rice. Here I'm using long grain white rice, but you can also use jasmine rice or basmati rice. And you can see that recipe and video right here. So after you kind of stir in your rice, then we are going to just add our chicken tenderloins right back on top of that rice and broth or water. And then I'm going to add half a cup of teriyaki sauce. You don't want to mix this because we don't want all that sugar getting mixed into the water too much. And so just add that chicken teriyaki marinade right over the top. You can either make your own or I just use a store-bought version. Close the lid, turn the knob to sealing, and then press the manual or pressure cook button and adjust to five minutes with a 10 minute natural pressure release. If you use a different kind of chicken, you'll probably have to cook it a little bit longer. However, you want to cook any chicken into a smaller manageable size because if you cook the rice too long, it will be really soggy. After the chicken and the rice are done, just open up that lid and then quickly add three to four cups of frozen vegetables. I like using this stir fry mix because it has a lot of really yummy vegetables that you find in a chicken teriyaki rice bowl and it's frozen so it's even easier. So add in the frozen vegetables and then give it a quick stir just to kind of toss in all those frozen vegetables into the hot chicken and rice and then put the lid back onto the Instant Pot and then let it sit for about five minutes. The vegetables are already cooked and so what you wanna do is just steam them through and make sure that they're nice and warm, but we don't wanna pressure cook with the vegetables otherwise they will be a soggy mess. And that's it, all you have to do is just scoop it into a bowl and if you want, you can add some extra teriyaki sauce and some sesame seeds for some garnish and that is a super easy, healthy, delicious meal that you can make for your family in less than 30 minutes. So to your Instant Pot, add one cup of long grain white rice. You can use jasmine rice or basmati rice. I use long grain white rice, but any three of those rices will work just fine. So add your rice to the Instant Pot, and I don't rinse mine, but you can if you like. And then we are going to add one and a half cups of water. If you like, you can also add a little dash of salt, and I usually just kind of shake mine around just a little bit and to make sure that all the rice is distributed in the water. And then we're going to pressure cook it for three minutes on high pressure with a 10 minute natural pressure release. 
Here's also a little tip. If you don't like that noise that your Instant Pot makes when you open and close it, you can always turn it off by pressing the minus key on your Instant Pot until it says S off or sound off. If you want to turn the sound back on, just press the plus sign until it says S on or sound on. Our Instant Pot has been naturally releasing the pressure for about 10-11 minutes and the pin actually just dropped, so this is perfect timing. I'm going to take off the lid and let all that water from the lid kind of drip into the Instant Pot and don't lift it away right away, otherwise that liquid will get on your counter. Now we have our rice and it's cooked all the way, so I'm just going to toss it a little bit, like kind of break it up, make sure that it's cooked evenly and it looks great, nice and fluffy. Now we're going to add in our sugars. So first I'm going to add in a quarter cup of brown sugar, and then I'm also going to add in half a cup of cream of coconut. Cream of coconut is not the same thing as coconut cream or coconut milk, so make sure that you get cream of coconut. It's actually kind of an emulsion of sugar mixed with coconut. Let's see, it has coconut, sugar, water, yeah, all that good stuff, and it's used usually for mixed drinks, but it's kind of this syrupy texture, and this is the first time I've gotten it in a can. Usually I get it in a little squeeze bottle, but this is the first time I got it, got it in a can, and it's separated. So for this case, if you use a can of cream of coconut, make sure that you take it out and put it in a bowl or something or a blender, and make sure that all that syrupy liquid is mixed in with that thick coconut cream on the top. Otherwise, you'll have like a disproportionate amount of sugar or coconut. You want to make sure that it's nice and emulsified, and so make sure you whip it up in the can or in a bowl before you add it into your coconut rice pudding. So half a cup of cream of coconut, and it's so good. If you have leftovers, you can use it in pina coladas. I like to put it into like pancake syrup or like in frosting to make it really yummy and coconutty. It's so good. So I've got our sugars here and we're just gonna mix this in until it gets yummy and glisteny. So good. And I like using the brown sugar versus the white sugar because I think it gives it kind of a, a deeper taste, a deeper flavor, so I really like that. So now we are going to press the saute button on our Instant Pot. I wanna make sure it's on. Okay, if the cancel keep warm, press saute and press start. Okay, <laughs> I, this is my new Instant Pot Duo Plus and I'm not used to using it, so I'm kind of learning as I go. So I've got our sugars in our Instant Pot and we wanna make sure that the sugar is all the way dissolved before you add anything else to it. After we have it on saute mode, it's gonna start to warm back up and we are going to add about half a can of coconut milk. This is full fat coconut milk. Make sure that you shake it up before you open it so then you get all of that cream on top. And we're just gonna add in about half because the other half we're going to use to thicken it. So just add in half of the coconut milk. Oh, it smells so good. Oh man. And we're just gonna wait for this to come up to a simmer. And in the meantime, we're going to crack our eggs. All right, to a liquid measuring cup, we're just gonna add in the rest of the coconut milk. Make sure you get all of that thickened cr coconut cream, not to be confused with cream of coconut. So we've got our coconut milk here. And then I'm gonna crack in two eggs. The eggs are optional, but they do thicken the rice pudding. So that's what I use to thicken it. If you are vegan and you don't want to add the eggs, you can just thicken it up with some cornstarch or some other thickener. I like to take a whisk and just whisk in the eggs into the coconut milk. So it's nice and thick. And this is going to make like a custard. So then our coconut rice pudding is thick and creamy. We don't want it to be just like watery, milky rice, right? So whisk in the eggs really nicely so then there's no chunks of scrambled eggs in your rice pudding. And I think it's just about ready for us. Perfect. Also, I need to get a new whisk. This is like the whisk attachment for my hand mixer, but it works because it's like the nice little size, so I like it. All right, so you can see over here that it's already kind of thickened up a little bit. We, oh, it's perfect, okay. So I'm going to just slowly 
whisk in our egg mixture, our egg and coconut milk mixture. Make sure all the rice is off of the sides of the pot. So while whisking, you want to just slowly pour this in, kind of drizzle it in. Otherwise, like I said, you're gonna get scrambled eggs in your rice pudding. And we want smooth, velvety, delicious, coconutty rice pudding. Oh, it's so good. Also, now might be a good time to let you know that if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button below so then you don't miss a single video. Okay, so now we're just gonna whisk this together until it comes back up to a simmer. And as it cooks, it will get thicker and thicker, which is really nice. If you like it super thick, you can even add an additional egg or an additional egg yolk. It's so stinking good. We're just gonna wait for this to come up to a simmer. And then after that, we are gonna add in a little bit of vanilla extract. Another thing that is really good with this rice pudding is if you put in a little almond extract because almond and coconut go so well together. And then if you taste it and it's not coconutty enough for you, you can add in a little bit of coconut emulsion or like a coconut extract and that will bump up the coconut flavor as well. This is coming up. So like I said, this is a completely dairy-free recipe. Yes, eggs are not dairy. A lot of people might complain about that. Eggs are not dairy, but this is completely dairy-free. There's no butter, no milk, no cream, and so that's really nice. But if you do want it even creamier and even richer, feel free to add like two tablespoons of butter and about a quarter cup of heavy cream to this recipe and it will make it even creamier. All right, this is getting there. Okay, we'll just let this simmer for just a couple minutes. One of the things I actually really do like about this new Instant Pot Duo Plus that I have is that the liner doesn't spin when I'm stirring things. So there's little nubs on the inside of the Instant Pot that kind of secure the liner in place. And so it makes it so it doesn't spin like I'm stirring it now and the liner's not spinning everywhere. I really like that feature. Oh, it's getting nice and thick. Okay, we'll just give this a couple more minutes. Make sure you're stirring this pretty constantly. You can walk away for a couple minutes, but if you don't, it'll probably start burning on the bottom. So just make sure you're there to give it a good stir every now and then. And it's actually, I think it's just about there. Look how custardy that is. It smells so good. Oh, so yummy. All right, we are going to take this off the heat now. Okay, so we're gonna add in our vanilla extract, just about a teaspoon, and I'm sorry, but I never measure my vanilla. I think that erring on the side of overusing vanilla is always better. So we're gonna add in a teaspoon of vanilla and just stir that in. You can serve this with toasted coconut on top. You can even throw in some coconut flakes in there if you want, so then they get kind of chewy and soft in the rice pudding. I like to serve mine with cinnamon, some toasted coconut, and some fresh raspberries. It's so good. All right, I think this is there. I think we're gonna turn it off now. Is the right one? Cancel. Oh, so good. Okay, we're gonna scoop it up and serve it. Okay, this is burning hot, but I'm gonna take just a little tiny bite so I can tell you kind of the flavor. So, mm. that is so good. The rice is perfectly cooked. It's super coconutty, but it's very light. Like it doesn't have a very heavy flavor. It's just light and sweet and coconutty. You are going to love this. So to start out, we are going to add two tablespoons of olive oil to a hot instant pot. And then we're going to saute some Cajun sausage. So I ordered Cajun chicken sausage in my grocery order, but they accidentally gave me pork Cajun sausage. Totally fine, it all works right. You'll still count this as a chicken and rice recipe. So I like to just cut the sausage on the diagonal, on a bias, which is cut diagonally. And then we're going to saute that in the hot olive oil for just a couple of minutes. And then we're also going to add in our pretty vegetables. So I like to add one whole red bell pepper, 
one whole yellow bell pepper, and then three quarters of a cup of chopped celery. If you want, you can also add half of an onion, either a yellow onion or a red onion. Both of those would be great in this dish. Mix that up and let it saute for just a minute while we put together our seasoning blend. So in this little bowl, I have one tablespoon of dried onion flakes, three teaspoons of Cajun seasoning, just use your favorite kind, but if it's really spicy, maybe do just one and a half or two teaspoons to start out. A quarter teaspoon of thyme, a quarter teaspoon of smoked paprika, one teaspoon of oregano, and then we're just gonna shake this all up and dump it into our sausage and veggie mixture. After that, add one teaspoon of minced garlic, and then we're just going to let this saute for just a couple minutes. After the sausage and veggies have sauteed for a couple minutes and they have a little bit of brown on them, we're going to deglaze the pot with one tablespoon of soy sauce, half a cup of water, and one cup of chicken broth. We're also adding one cup of long grain white rice, and then just stir this all up. Make sure that there's nothing stuck on the bottom of the pot, otherwise it will get really burned and you don't want that. So scrape all that yummy flavor off the bottom of the pot, make sure the rice is submerged, and then we're ready to cook our Cajun sausage and rice. Lock the lid onto your instant pot, turn the knob from venting to sealing, and then cook on manual high pressure for five minutes with a 10 minute natural pressure release. This dish is really easy to make. It's spicy, it's saucy, it's really delicious. And I know you're going to enjoy it with your families. So tell me if you make this in the comments below. First, press the saute button on your Instant Pot and get it nice and hot. And then we're going to add two tablespoons of garlic butter. If you don't have garlic butter on hand, you can always use some garlic powder with some salt and some other seasonings in there and that will work just fine. To the melted garlic butter, we are going to add one cup of long grain white rice, and then we're going to saute it to make a rice pilaf. We wanna just make sure that the rice is nice and nutty and browned, so good, it kind of absorbs all that delicious flavor. And then that's really it. We're going to add in half a pound to one pound of chicken tenderloins and then just mix that all up and make sure that there's not any rice sticking to the bottom of the pot. After you add the chicken tenderloins into the rice and you just kind of mix that up a little bit, we're going to add a little bit more seasoning. So I like using this delicious lemon pepper. It is so good. It's the best lemon pepper I've ever used. I'll link this below. Um, and then we're also going to add about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of dried oregano. After a couple minutes, all you need to do is deglaze the pot with one cup of chicken broth. And then I'm also going to add the juice of one lemon, which is about a quarter cup, but if you have more, that's totally fine. And then a half a cup of some Olive Garden dressing. After everything is in the pot, I like to top it with a couple of lemon slices for some presentation and flavor. And then we're ready to pressure cook. So just put the lid on your Instant Pot, turn the knob from venting to sealing, and then cook for five minutes on high pressure with a 10 minute natural pressure release. If you want to add even more flavor to this dish, you can saute the chicken tenderloins with a little bit of lemon pepper or garlic powder seasoning in that garlic butter at first, and then take them out, and then you cook the rice with a little bit more garlic butter, just so then every layer has a little bit more flavor. But this dish is super easy because you can just throw everything together. You don't really have to even saute for very long, and it's ready to go in 30 minutes or less. So after the lemon garlic chicken has rested for 10 minutes with a natural pressure release, just open up that lid and then you're ready to eat. You can add more Olive Garden dressing if you want a little bit more cake. If you want to add a little bit more lemon zest or lemon juice, that's really good as well. And this dish goes really well with some steamed broccoli, steamed asparagus, um, any green vegetable. It's so fresh and bright and buttery and garlicky. You're gonna love it. For this recipe, you will need half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of white sugar, one third of a cup of oil, two eggs, two teaspoons of vanilla, one cup of flour, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of cloves, two cups of shredded carrots, one cup of chopped nuts. I used pecans, but you can also use walnuts, pecans, any combination. Half a cup of shredded coconut. It can be sweetened or unsweetened. 
two thirds cup of pineapple. I usually just buy a eight ounce can of pineapple chunks and then cut them up so then I can just have smaller chunks in the cake. Okay, let's get started making our cake. So the first thing we wanna do is combine our oil with our sugars. So I have just a third of a cup of vegetable oil in here. And then I have half a cup of brown and a half a cup of white sugar. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of cream together, not cream because it's not butter, but we're just gonna mix together the sugars with the oil to kind of get it combined. You can also use a hand mixer or a stand mixer for this part. All right, so now that we have that incorporated, we are going to add two eggs. Just straight in. Let's do two teaspoons of vanilla and then whisk this all up together. I like using this flat whisk because then I can scrape things off the bottom of the bowl or the pot, whatever, while I'm cooking. It really helps to just incorporate everything in really quick. So keep stirring this until all the sugar is dissolved and you don't have any clumps. Now that our mixture is combined like this, we're gonna sift in our dry ingredients. So I just have a little sifter here and we're gonna add one cup of flour. and the rest of our dry ingredients. We've got a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, some cloves and nutmeg. And I just like to throw those right on top and then sift over the sugar and the egg oil mixture. Oh, those spices smell so good together. I love cinnamon. We're just going to whisk in lightly the flour mixture, and this is going to be almost like a cookie dough. It's gonna be a very thick batter. You don't want any dry spots when you add in the rest of the ingredients, but you don't wanna over mix the flour because you don't want it to be like super tough. So we've got our batter here, and it looks just kind of like a very loose cookie dough, almost like a peanut butter or an almond butter is what it looks like. So to this, we are going to add our other ingredients. So we're gonna start with two cups of shredded carrots. They can be pre-shredded. You can buy like just the bag at the store or you can shred your own, it doesn't matter. It's a lot of carrots. <laughs> After the carrots, we're going to add in our pineapples. I just use an eight ounce can of pineapple chunks. I drain it and then I just chop up the pineapple chunks so they're a little bit smaller, but you can also use like pineapple tidbits, crushed pineapple, whatever you want. But you do want to drain the liquid out because we don't want that extra liquid in our cake. So I just drained it out and like added some sparkling water and just made a little drink. So you can do it whatever you want with it. So we've got our pineapple. So good. And a cup of nuts. I'm using pecans that I just chopped up, but you can use any nut you like. I think pecans and walnuts are kind of the best ones. And then half a cup of coconut. You can use a sweetened shredded coconut or an unsweetened, doesn't matter. And just fold in all that goodness into that thick batter. And then what we're gonna do is just let the batter sit for about five, 10 minutes. So then the moisture from the carrots can kind of draw out into the batter. It's kind of the same concept as zucchini bread. Zucchini bread has a really kind of a thick batter at first and then you add in all that zucchini and it just transforms. So you can see that this is super thick. The batter is barely just like covering all of the carrots and the nuts and the pineapple. It's super thick. So we are just gonna let this rest for a couple minutes and in the meantime, I'm gonna prepare my pans. So I just have two six inch cake pans and these are awesome for just baking, whatever. And we are going to grease them. I just like to use some cooking spray. Make sure you're getting the sides, definitely the bottom. You do not want this to stick. That is like the worst, because we want our cake layers to be 
perfect. Okay, and then before we put them in the Instant Pot, I'm gonna kind of explain how we're going to stack them. So I am going to use my silicone pressure cooking sling and put it in the bottom of my Instant Pot. We have our pressure cooking sling. I'm gonna have one cake pan full of batter and I'm gonna cover it with foil and we're gonna put it on the first trivet. So then we have to stack the second one on top of it. So instead of stacking it right on top of the foil so there's not a ton of airflow, um, I am going to use another trivet or whatever you have. So today I'm going to use this little um, net that I have and I'm just gonna put that on top and then put the other cake pan on top of it. So then there is something to like stack both of them. Another thing you can use are like chopsticks. You can just put them on top of the first one, the first pan, and then set the second one on top. Whatever you have to just keep a little bit of a layer between the two cake layers, that's what you're gonna want. Today we're making a homemade carrot cake in our Instant Pot, but if you want to make a Instant Pot carrot cake cheesecake, then you can add this optional cheesecake layer swirl. So if you're gonna do that, just add two blocks of cream cheese, that's 16 ounces, and blend that together with three fourths of a cup of sugar, two eggs, and half a tablespoon of vanilla. You just wanna mix that up really nice, and then you're going to dollop that into our carrot cake batter after it goes in our pans. That's totally optional, but the cook time is still the same, and it's a really yummy way to eat this carrot cake to have that cheesecake layer it's so good today we are going to just make the regular original carrot cake okay it's been a couple minutes now and you can tell that our batter is a lot looser there appears to be more batter because a lot of the moisture from the carrots has uh, released into the batter and so it now looks a little bit more like regular cake batter so I'm gonna take this and divide it evenly between the two cake pans I have our cake layers here and I am going to just cover them with foil. So now we're ready to pressure cook our carrot cakes in the Instant Pot. So we are going to add two cups of water to the Instant Pot. And then we're gonna add our first cake layer. I'm gonna just put it right on top of the pressure cooking slink and drop it into the Instant Pot. And then we're gonna add our second cake layer, just like that. And then I'm just gonna put my little sling together and then put on the lid, turn the knob from venting to sealing. And then we're gonna cook this for 60 minutes. One hour in the Instant Pot with a full natural pressure release. So about 15 to 30 minutes, just depending on how long it takes for the pin to drop on your Instant Pot. As soon as the cakes are done, we will take them out and let them rest at room temperature until they're cooled and then just refrigerate them overnight. This just helps to kind of firm up the cakes, make sure that they're not gonna fall apart while you're icing them, and it helps to just keep them really moist. So that is what we're gonna do, and then we'll finish this cake up tomorrow. So our cakes have been chilling in the fridge overnight. Today we are making the frosting. So this is a delicious cream cheese frosting. I absolutely love it and I know you will too. For the cream cheese frosting, you will need eight ounces of cream cheese. This is one block that's been softened, six tablespoons of softened butter, four cups of powdered sugar, three teaspoons of vanilla, and a couple pinches of salt. So I just have my softened cream cheese here, and you can soften cream cheese in the microwave. Usually there's like a little setting for it, or you can just take it out a couple hours before you wanna use it, but it's important that it's softened because otherwise you're gonna have lumps of cream cheese in your frosting. And I'm just gonna add in six tablespoons of butter. One stick of butter is eight tablespoons, so I'm just going to take all, whoops, all but two tablespoons of the butter, just plop it into our cream cheese. And then we're gonna cream these two together with a little bit of vanilla. You gotta shake up your vanilla every time because otherwise, if you're using real vanilla, your vanilla will settle a little bit and you want to make sure you have all that flavor. I love vanilla and I almost never measure it. So we'll also use a couple shakes of salt. 
and then we'll just cream this together. Make sure that your cream cheese and your butter are fully incorporated. You want them to be fluffy, cohesive. You don't want any chunks or lumps in there because then it will be lumpy in your frosting. If it is a little bit lumpy, just microwave it for 10 seconds at a time and then mix 10 seconds at a time until it's nice and soft. You don't want it to be melted, but you do want it to be softened. And now I have four cups of powdered sugar and we're just gonna add this while mixing it about a cup at a time. Occasionally, I like to just wipe down my beaters and my bowl to make sure that everything gets incorporated. All right, we have our cream cheese frosting now. It's gorgeous. It's got this beautiful, just kind of a light yellow tan color and it's gonna go perfect on our cake. So let's go get our cakes from the fridge. After you take your cakes out of the Instant Pot and you let them cool to room temperature and you want to refrigerate them overnight, then this is what they look like. They are perfect. I checked them last night, so excited about them. They do shrink down just a little bit after you make them, but I like to just take a plastic knife and just run my knife along the outsides and just kind of shake it a little bit to dislodge it <laughs> like that. And then, perfect. Okay, so we've got our first layer here and it's moist oh my gosh it's so good I can't wait to share it with you so if you want you can cut your layers so you can like trim the tops to make them so they're super even but I don't really care so I am just going to set this back in the pan until we're ready for it and now we're ready to assemble our cake so I just have my first layer right here and I'm just going to add a good little dollop of cream cheese frosting and use an offset spatula or a knife and just spread it evenly. Brett doesn't like carrot cake and I don't think my, well, my kids don't like carrots. <laughs> Oddly enough, that's the one vegetable where they just really struggle with. And so this carrot cake is probably gonna be eaten by me <laughs> and my friends and neighbors. This is a perfect size though. If you just want a little you know, taste of carrot, but you don't want like a ginormous Costco size carrot cake. This is a perfect cake because it's not too big, but you're, you're still gonna get a good eight servings out of it. And another good thing about this cake is that it can be made early. It freezes really nicely. Our cake has been in the freezer for about 15 minutes and the crumb coat has set. So that means that hopefully it's not gonna pull any more crumb or frosting off of here. So we are just gonna go ahead and add the rest of our frosting onto the cake. Okay, I have a little bit of extra frosting here and I'm just going to put it in a piping bag and just use it to kind of decorate a little bit. Here is my tip for using a piping bag. This is just a disposable piping bag and I am going to fill it up with just the last little bit of our cream cheese frosting. But I have my bag. I'm going to put a star tip in it. I'm just gonna stick it right into the tip there and then I'm gonna put it in a glass just like this, and then we can scrape the rest of our frosting into the bag, scrape it on the edge of the cup, and then you're not dealing with frosting like going everywhere. Okay, so now you just pull up the sides of the bag, cut a little bit off the bottom, squeeze the piping tip in, perfect. See, so just like that, and squeeze the air out, and now we've got perfect piping bag. I don't really have a plan for this, but I'm just gonna decorate how I see fit, and how I, how I want to, and uh, we'll see what we come up with. So I also made some crumbs. These are just some blended up pecans with some graham cracker. So I'm just gonna use that as kind of some dust, some sprinkles for the cake. And I'm not gonna add any like, you know, food coloring carrots. You can totally do that if you want. You can add maybe some little cookies. I was thinking about making me, maybe making some macarons. But we're just keeping it simple here today. You don't need it to be crazy. There are cake baking accounts for that. <laughs> so talented. And I've got a little bit of my toasted coconut in here. We'll have a couple toasted coconut flakes. Now I have some really pretty, just like little flowers that I found at um, the store while I was doing some recipe prepping and so I thought oh that might be pretty to put in a couple a couple flowers here and there for springtime 
So I thought, we'll add a couple little green things in here. But anyway, there we go. We have our carrot cake. It looks beautiful. It's so moist, and I'm gonna cut into it in just a sec. We've got our completed carrot cake, and I just wanna show you just how delicious this is. So we've got, we've got this beautiful brown cake with lots of pineapple, nuts, carrots, this awesome cream cheese frosting, and this is a very thick, like dense, the texture is a lot like, kind of like a really dense fruit cake, but it's so good, so let's dig in. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. First, take one cup of long grain wild rice and put it in a colander or a strainer and wash it off under cold running water. You don't have to wash the rice until it runs clear. Just run it for a couple minutes until you get all the debris off. Next, add your wild rice into the Instant Pot along with one and a half cups of water. I like to shake the Instant Pot a little bit just to distribute the rice and the water. And sometimes I'll even add a pinch of salt. It's totally up to you. Next, put the lid on the Instant Pot and lock it into place and turn the knob from venting to sealing. If it's not in the sealing position, it won't ever come to pressure and your rice will burn and not cook. Next, press the manual or pressure cook button and cook for 20 minutes. If you like your rice with a little bit more of a bite to it, you can do 15 to 20 minutes, anywhere in that range, depending on how firm or soft you like your rice, but my preference is 20 minutes, and then give it a 10 to 15 minute natural pressure release. That means that after the Instant Pot has counted down from 15 or 20, you will wait until it says an L on the screen, meaning lapsed time, and then wait until it says L10 or L15, depending on how soft you like your rice. After that, turn the knob from the ceiling to the venting position to release the rest of the pressure, and then you can open up your lid, fluff your rice, and enjoy. Wild rice is not a sticky rice, and so when you fluff up your rice, you may still have a little residual water or broth at the bottom of your Instant Pot. That's totally normal, and you can just mix it up into the rice, or if you would like, you can put the Instant Pot lid back on and kind of steam it a little bit longer, or what you can do is push the saute button and kind of just let that water cook off and evaporate. Wild rice is a really yummy rice to put into soups or to eat with grilled meats or salmon like we have here today. It's really good if you add a little bit of butter and salt or seasoning to it, and it's a really healthy rice as well. So that's how you make wild rice in your Instant Pot. So for this recipe to be totally successful, you need four critical ingredients. The first ingredient for the soup is fresh parsley. I know that might sound kind of weird because fresh parsley is usually just like a garnish, but it adds so much freshness and flavor to the soup. You really need to buy the fresh curly parsley. The second vital ingredient for this viral chicken noodle soup recipe is better than bouillon. This is a chicken base. It's it's like this paste consistency and you reconstitute it with water to add really good flavor to anything that uses chicken broth or that needs a little bit of extra chicken flavor. The best place you can possibly find it is a large jar at Costco. Usually it's on sale for about five to six dollars, but if you go to a regular store, you can also find it there. I like to get the organic reduced sodium kind. The third absolutely necessary ingredient for this instant pot chicken noodle soup is tarragon. Now, tarragon is not one of those spices that everyone always has. It's actually a little bit more expensive at the grocery store, but it is so important to this chicken noodle soup. It has almost a minty flavor to it, but it is so, so, so necessary. So please don't skip the tarragon. The last vital ingredient to this amazing chicken noodle soup recipe is homemade egg noodles. So you can make this soup without the homemade egg noodles, but I just don't think it's quite the same. So I have a full recipe for the egg noodles that I'm gonna walk you through today as well. And I'll also give you instructions if you wanna just use pre-made pasta, or if you have like pre-made frozen egg noodles, you can use those too. With all that said, let's talk about the ingredients for this chicken noodle soup. For the soup, you will need 
one tablespoon of olive oil or butter, one large onion diced, one tablespoon of minced garlic, one bag of mini carrots, or it's about three cups chopped carrots, one whole bunch of celery, or about five cups, two to three fresh or frozen chicken breasts. And if you use fresh chicken, you can dice that up and it's about three cups of chicken breast, half a cup of fresh curly parsley, two tablespoons of dried oregano, one and a half tablespoons of dried basil, two tablespoons of tarragon, one bay leaf, six cups of chicken broth, and I just use water with the right amount of better than bouillon to reconstitute it. I think it's like one teaspoon for one cup of liquid. An additional quarter cup of better than bouillon and one cup of heavy cream. This is what makes it so thick and rich and creamy. It is to die for, but if you are dairy free and you don't want to add heavy cream, just add an additional cup of chicken broth. So that would be seven cups of chicken broth. For the homemade egg noodles, you will need two cups of flour, half a teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of white pepper or salt is fine too, two large eggs, half a cup of warm water, and additional flour as necessary. It's about half a cup to one cup when all is said and done. This chicken noodle soup is unlike any other you've ever had. It is very herby, it's hearty, it's thick. This is not like a couple pieces of carrot and celery and chicken swimming in this like clear chicken broth. It is so flavorful and warm. It's going to be the best chicken noodle soup you have ever had, I promise. To start making our Instant Pot Chicken Noodle Soup, first press the saute button on your Instant Pot, set it to high, and then add one tablespoon of butter or oil, and just let that melt down, and then add your large chopped onion. I like to just let it sit and kind of sweat down until it's slightly translucent. While the onions are sweating down, this is when I like to start making my pasta dough for my homemade egg noodles. So first you need two cups of flour in a bowl and then I like to make a well in the center. And then add your baking powder and white pepper or salt. Whisk this all together so we can combine all of those dry ingredients. And then make another well. And add two large eggs and half a cup of water. Mix all these ingredients up to make a soft dough. And once it gets kind of combined, I like to move from a spatula to my hands and just kind of knead it together a little bit. You're not like kneading it like bread dough, but you want it to come together. After everything is combined into a nice ball, just cover this with some plastic wrap or a clean towel and we'll come back to it in just a couple minutes. But we need to let it rest, so we'll go back to our soup and add the rest of our vegetables. You add your garlic and then add your carrots and celery. Just mix this all together and let it saute for a couple minutes just to kind of get those vegetables a little bit softened. Next, add your chicken breast pieces. So here I have about three cups of chopped chicken breast pieces, but if you don't wanna cut them up beforehand, you can just throw in two or three large pieces, like frozen or fresh. With the chicken, add about three quarters of your fresh parsley. Next, in a small bowl, combine all of those spices together. So we have basil, oregano, tarragon, and bay leaf. Throw the bay leaf in your soup and then just mix up the rest of your spices and then sprinkle in about half and make sure you save the rest because we'll add those after pressure cooking. Now we'll just pour our chicken broth over all of that and then mix it all together. Place the lid on top of your Instant Pot lock it into place, and then turn the sealing knob from venting to sealing. If your chicken was cut up into pieces like mine was in this video, then just set your Instant Pot to three minutes. That's right, it doesn't take very long at all. If your chicken is larger, like you have a one pound 
frozen chicken breast or fresh chicken breast, just do 10 minutes instead of three. Now that our soup is pressure cooking, we can come back to our egg noodles. Just take that little ball dough out onto a floured surface and just give it an initial roll out. You wanna kind of tap it into a round disc, however far it will roll out. But we just wanna make sure this is generously floured the whole time. Lots of people get really flustered about the noodles, but you have to make sure you're flouring all the time. Dust the noodles again and then flip it over. You wanna make sure that you're always flipping and flouring as much as possible to make sure nothing sticks on your work surface. The best way to do this is just grabbing a little bit of flour off of your workbench and then taking it up a little bit higher and then just sprinkling it like this, kind of like in a snapping action is like the best way. But the higher you go, the more evenly distributed the flour will be, so that's why I like to do that. Now just cover it with a clean tea towel or some plastic wrap and we'll come back to this in five minutes. All right, five minutes later, we're gonna take the tea towel off of the noodles and that just gave time for the dough to just rest and relax so it wasn't so tight and elastic. So now roll them out further, probably about an eighth of an inch is what we're looking for. Now you want to cut it into strips. So as you can see, I cut mine into quadrants so I had smaller pieces that were easier to work with. And then I'm gonna just take each one of those squares and then roll them out just a little bit and then cut them into long rectangles. Remember to flower at every step. This is the most important thing. And then you can just use either a knife or a bench scraper to cut your noodles. If you have a pizza cutter, that also works well. Or if you have a pasta machine, even better. I just like using this bench scraper because it's a lot easier, but I also used a knife with great results. You wanna cut the noodles so they're about a quarter of an inch thick and they will expand while they're cooking, so don't worry if they're too little. All right, now that we have these beautiful little noodles, toss them in a bowl with, you guessed it, more flour. And then I like to just shake that bowl and kind of throw it and toss it a little bit so everything is coated in flour. But when all the noodles are done, I just like to cover this and I'll keep it in my fridge or my freezer, depending on how far along the soup is. And then when I'm ready to cook them, I'll take them out of the fridge or the freezer. You just don't want them sitting at room temperature, getting hot or warm because then they will start to stick to each other. All right, now our soup is done pressure cooking. As soon as it's done pressure cooking, you can do a quick release. But with any Instant Pot dish that has a lot of liquid in it, I prefer to do short bursts releasing the pressure so then you know, liquid or soup or whatever's in the Instant Pot doesn't come spewing out of the ceiling knob because that does happen. I just like to turn the knob from venting to ceiling in just like quick bursts at first and then you can do longer bursts as the pressure releases. So if your chicken is cut, you're good to go. You're just ready to keep rolling with the soup. But if your chicken was a whole piece, just take them out onto a cutting board and cut them up into cubes or you can shred them. It's whatever your preference is. Next, press the saute button to bring it back up to a boil. And we're gonna add the rest of our parsley and the rest of our dried herbs back to the soup along with that quarter cup of better than bouillon and just mix that all in. We're gonna add just a little bit more flavor into the soup. Pressure cooking the soup kind of dampens those herb flavors. So I like to add the second half after pressure cooking. So then it just like livens up that flavor a little bit and it just tastes a lot better. <laughs> as soon as the soup has come back up to a boil, you can start adding your egg noodles. So just take your bowl of egg noodles from the fridge or the freezer or the counter and start sprinkling them into the soup. It's okay if the flour gets in there that is in the bowl because that also will help thicken the soup a little bit. I like to just give this a little stir to kind of distribute the noodles into the broth. And then you only have to cook the noodles about two or three minutes. And as soon as they all float to the top and they're plump and they look good, you can usually test one to see if it's cooked all the way, you're done. So turn off your Instant Pot and then this is my favorite part is add a cup of heavy cream to the chicken noodle soup if you want to make it extra creamy. Oh. There's seriously nothing better than adding heavy cream to anything, it makes everything taste better. Here's a quick tip for all you mamas out there. If you have little babies or even big babies like I do, and you're serving this super hot soup for dinner, this is what you should do. 
So take their little bowls out and then I like to add frozen vegetables to their bowl. I usually do like corn or peas. I usually have just like something in my fridge, like some mixed vegetables or whatever, but they have to be frozen. So add a little bit of some frozen vegetables to their bowls and then ladle some of the hot soup in their bowls. Mix it up and then just let it sit for a second, probably like two to three minutes and then come back and mix it again and this will be the perfect temperature for your kids. The frozen vegetables cools down your soup and the hot soup warms through the vegetables and it's the best hack for all you parents out there. I hope you enjoyed those 10 easy Instant Pot recipes. They're some of my absolute favorites in there, especially the chicken noodle soup that is a staple in our house. So if you like all these recipes and you want more of these long form ones, check out my other 25 Instant Pot recipe video right up here and we'll see you next time. Bye.